Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu and I got Jared Jessup with me today. We're going to do another one of these series of something from everywhere. The one we're focused on today is arm triangles. I did one on uh, triangles already. I did one on Kimura. This one we're going to look at uh, arm triangles or the head and arm choke. Uh, this is basically where you have the, the head and the arm wrapped here and some kind of configuration with the hands and we're going to look at, explore these from different positions where you might find them commonly in a roll. So first one we're going to take off and look at is we're going to look off of a leg drag position. Leg drag position basically happens like I'm trying to pass his guard in some way. There's different grips, different things, that's a whole different tutorial. But after I get to this leg drag position, I get my knee down here like this. A common response for him to have is to make this frame so that I don't flatten him out too much. So once we get here and I'm trying to drive in, I'm gonna get that resistance, but then I'm gonna pop this arm across here. I'm gonna shoot in nice and deep off of this one. And then initially I'm gonna probably get a gable grip with my hands and I'm gonna try to get my head to the floor over here and try to flatten him out. I may be able to finish right from here, but if he's got a lot of uh, shoulder mass and everything, it's gonna be a little hard. So what I'd like to try to do here is flatten him out over to this side, get my head to the floor, get my pelvis to the floor, gable grip here, squeeze my elbow inside, drop all the weight like that. If I'm still not getting it, I'll keep my head in place, keep the squeeze, and then walk my feet a little farther north here to finish out on that choke like that. And so that's gonna be our first head and arm triangle from that position now. So when we're talking about moving into this progression, so the first thing is if you pass the guard somehow, typically what's gonna happen after you pass the guard, you're gonna secure some kind of side control. And maybe you have the head and arm right there like we did off the leg drag, or maybe he establishes some other kind of side control, and now he's dealing with some other kind of frame that might give him the opportunity too, like this here. If I'm right here and I've got the, the frame on the neck right here, it's a, it's a good idea to put a little bit of pressure to, uh, to get some resistance in. It makes the pop off easier because I've, I've got space right here to get the arm back. Right. So as I come here, I want to bring my ear down next to the shoulder. And I like that this arm is deep as I can, almost grabbing the armpit and keeping my shoulder under the chin. Now, I'm going to use my hand to help block the hip as my head drops down. I elevate my hips and shoot my knee across. From here, check out the way I swivel my heels over one, boom, two, off to make sure that he's not able to trap my feet up. Boom, boom. Now I raise my hip, come off the side. Right here, I like to use, sometimes I'll just keep a, a grip on the shoulder and bring my shoulder down to my knuckles and it makes for a vicious choke. Or I can do the S grip or the gable grip, whichever you find most compelling. And my head goes down, I'm gonna walk my hips away and as I walk around, the choke gets tighter and tighter on Eli. All right, so uh, from right here, if uh, Eli's able to get the underhook here, I wanna bring my hand underneath Right? And I'm gonna come, I'm gonna use my head, to, my hand to control his head and bring it down so I can get this grip right here deep in the knee. Now, the key here is I'm dropping my, his shoulder through his carotid and my palms shutting off the carotid on this side, right? Because he's gotta stop the blood flow. So I'm right here. As I drop my shoulder down, this leg comes up and I drop down and in. And you get the, the choke very quickly. Now, if I don't control his head, it might pop away, right? His, his legs come back in. So this hand comes up and over and just kind of makes a grip right here to hold his head in place. And then I'm gonna bring my shoulder down towards my knuckles, bring everything right through the, through the neck right here. I'm up on my knee, it's right in the V, my foot's up and out and wide. Another way to hit it, if he gets that underhook from side control. So, like Jared was mentioning here, like if the, the guy gets the underhook like this here, I'm gonna throw this almost like a wizard on here. If I feel like he's gonna start replacing the guard right away, this hand always is allowed too to come down here and kind of block and monitor. So I'm blocking on his leg here like this, and in that time, I can already start to secure the head so he doesn't kick it back like Jared was mentioning it was a bad idea for me to let happen. And then from there, if I need to really kill this underhook to get it deeper underneath, because I can't reach right here, then I'm gonna drop my hip and shoulder in so my neck is almost resting on his ribs here. So this is just a different variation that's smothering a little bit more here like this. And then I scoot through here and I'm gonna try to drive, I like to try to drive my elbow all the way to the floor here to get that full arm triangle this way. And then from here, I can finish with the choke, driving the hips inside here like this and pushing the pelvis forward too. So that's a different variation like Jeremy was showing on that Darce choke concept. Whichever variation you use, you just wanna make sure that you're not pushing his shoulder into his jaw and the pressure goes through the carotid and uh, the carotid on the other side. So the pressure's all in the neck and not going through you know, the chest or the jaw. If he gets too far into this here, and this may have happened that he turtled up from side control, I left him too much space, he's, uh, he's trying to escape. Maybe this happened from me sprawling out on him or whatever. Then from here, this gives me another opportunity for a different kind of arm triangle, which would be like an anaconda choke, which is still an arm triangle. Anytime that I'm using one part his shoulder, uh, one part his arm and shoulder to cut off the blood on one side, one part me trying to cut off the blood or restrict the blood technically on the other side with my arm, and then some part of my body on the back, either my forearm or my chest, then that's still an arm triangle because you have that triangular movement and blood restriction and making him go to sleep. 
So whenever we get to this position here, if I wanna do the anaconda choke, what I'm gonna do is enter my arm in by his neck and exit it by his armpit. So that's what's gonna happen here. And I wanna do it like I'm waving like this. So the back of my hand is against his lat or his shoulder. Now, he may be really wide in the lat or shoulder here and you may have shorter arms or whatever. This is a key detail right here if you have trouble finishing this one is first, Dave will grip your hands and use your forearm to smash that elbow tighter so the space is more narrow for you to fit around. Now this hand comes back open, I reach up, I grab my bicep, this one goes to his back. I wanna make sure that I tuck my head when I'm gonna roll and I get my nose underneath his stomach so he doesn't land on my head and smash my head and create a speed bump during the roll. Once we go here, I go to roll out like this and then the thing that I like to try to do next is I wanna to try to bring this leg up and touch the back of his arm so I don't have to just depend on my arms to keep him all smushed in together like this here. So I go here, I'm trying to smash that in and then get the tap like that. So let's look at a uh, real basic one from the guard, the closed guard right here. That's common for the guy to put his hand in, uh, form in your neck and frame the street type scenario. And so if the guy's pushing, I'll use my heels to get the weight off my neck and then I'll shift his arm off the side and pull him back in tight. I'll bring my knees, clasp the back of my shoulders. Now, I want to shoot my hand through and I'm going to this grip right here. I use um, the gable grip, palm turned away. That way if he goes to rip back, it makes the structure more uh, sound. It doesn't disassemble the structure this way. So I keep the grip. Now I want to make sure my shoulder drops below his chin and I get low right here. I just kind of want to scoot my hip out, make sure I don't get crunched up. I keep the grip. I'm going to pull his shoulder through the carotid and then bring my elbow back to my hip to make the, the choke happen. If I can't get it from right there, or if I've got enough space, I'll bring the hand up and hold the bicep. Bring the hand between our heads, and then go to execute uh, the finish right there. That's a really good one and all, but nobody's gonna do that in like a sport BJJ yeah. match. That's gonna be a common already. It's like nobody's gonna frame me strong. That's very common to happen with an unskilled energy, with an novice energy, with somebody who's just brawling and trying to smash you in pinion. So that's a very useful one right there, and I think it really is a good one to introduce the mechanics of it. If you wanna have one that's maybe a little more applicable to somebody who, who knows a little something or plays a little bit more like competitive like positioning and everything, then this is a good one from guard. It's gonna come more from butterfly guard. So what's gonna happen off of this one here is if we're playing some kind of butterfly guard position, I'm gonna kind of get my angle like this. Maybe I'm searching for my underhook or whatever. Um, if we're playing with the grips, then I can use the grip of the sleeve here, pop it off of whatever it's holding, and I'm gonna drag it across. If we're not, we don't have the grips, then I'm just gonna grab wrist and elbow and look to drag it across this way. Um, you can also go inside the arm here like this. So we're gonna use just this one right here, and I'm gonna pull this across this way, and I'm gonna shoot my arm as I pull. So you notice, like, I start here, pull this across, this arm is shooting underneath the armpit, coming out by the neck here, and we're gonna look to set up a, a darts choke variation. So I'm gonna first catch here like this, I can also use my chin to keep his head down initially, and then I'm gonna take my tricep back across his neck here like this, grab the bend of my arm here like this, so the blade of my hand goes into the elbow bend, and then I'm gonna come up on his back this direction. I want my left leg now, to come across his stomach like this here, and I'm gonna push off of this one to essentially like turn him over this way here. Once that happens here, I'm gonna finish the squeeze right there to execute that Dar's choke variation. This right here is helping to keep him from returning back up and also to replace the guard or anything, any kind of scramble that might happen. So sometimes when we get to this position in the mount, um, we get here like this, and I'm, if I'm underneath his head, this is great control for me here. I just have to know what options I have in this position. So somehow I want to capture this, this wrist here, and that may be that like I came in and, and I, I used my knee to block somehow where I was blocking here, and I capture this wrist, and I want to slingshot it back. If I just try to pull this back here and grab it, he's going to probably push his hand away from me to fight that grip here. So I'm going to first stretch it here like this, I'm going to slingshot it back, grab my own wrist, this I'm just going to set up like an Americana, so I'm going to come inside here like this. Now, the problem here is if I can't get my arm out from underneath his head, then this is probably not going to finish the Americana like this here. It's more like a pro wrestling move, it's not going to work. <laughs> so we go here like this, and I'm having trouble getting out from underneath his head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to finish it and make him think I want to finish it the wrong way. So I slide down closer, I'm going to put his elbow up toward his nose, get my chin to the outside of the elbow. Now this is essentially locked in place. The problem is my hand is stuck too, so I release one push this one clear, two like that, and then I gable grip my hands together, drop my head down like we mentioned before, same kind of dismount where I cut across here like this, slide down, and then drop, sink everything, melts inside, and finishes the arm. So sometimes, if we think about in the beginning, whenever we mentioned about leg drag, and then the guy framing against you, or the guy trying to turn out, or you get to side control, he's trying to turn up into you or turn away from you, what can happen a lot of times is the guy can expose his back. So I think it's fair for us to look, if we're really looking from the main positions, to explore an option off of back mount for the arm triangle, why we might want to do that. So Jared. Yeah, so, uh, all right, so 
Now, I, I, I like to, to use this arm triangle from back mount. If the guy's got his arm up, he's kind of protecting, right? Because uh, that makes the, uh, my ability, especially if I've got a seatbelt grip or whatnot, it makes it uh, probable for me to hit this move. Now, the second thing I want to consider is that I don't want to be, I want him to be real low on me in the back mount position. That's going to make it hard to hit any arm triangle. I need to be, uh, I have my torso, torso, almost my shoulders, like kind of lower than his. So a lot of times this will come up, I've got the seatbelt, the guy drives back into me, pushing his weight, yes, up high like this, right? So I can kind of get off the side slide. I'm kind of getting off the side. So when I shoot this arm through, I'm going to, uh, I want my shoulder under his, right here. And then my other hand comes up and I grab my bicep. Oh, shoot, shoot, you see that? Yes. Now my hand goes in between. I'm just pulling his shoulders of the carotid and retracting my shoulders like I'm doing a row, right? And that's gonna pull my, the blade right through the carotid and push his shoulder, drive his shoulder in his room. This one's really tricky because like, uh, for the guy that's having it done to him, because typically whenever you have that seatbelt adjusted on the guy, he's a lot more worried um, initially about this arm here because this is the one that's gonna be coming into his collar and coming in for the rear neck and stuff like that. So whenever you accentuate this one in deeper like this, like Jerry's talking about, it's a little less threatening initially. And so that's why this can be a really good one to have as like an option B off of that rear neck of choke or off of your collar grab or collar uh, chokes that you have from the back mount. Yeah. We looked at off of leg drag, going into guard passing, going into side control, a few options from side control. We looked at mount position, we looked at guard position. We looked at what you can do from back mount even and a lot of different transitional points and a lot of things to tie these, these concepts together. The head and arm choke or the arm triangle is a really, really valuable tool to have in your arsenal. So um, hopefully this has given you a good tutorial or even if you have some experience with it, some little details you didn't have before. But I appreciate it, Jared. Thanks, brother. And keep on watching Night Jiu Jitsu, like, subscribe, all that stuff.